Hey YouTube, Swiss Topper here and it's time for another MSF Doctors Without Borders charity event. Now over the last three years we have managed to raise over $100,000 for MSF and this year we're going to try to do even more. And just like last year, I have a way that you can help out, raise some cash, raise some awareness that it's not going to cost you a cent. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how. This year, starting on the 8th of September, will be the 24-hour blog TV show to help raise some donations for MSF. And there are going to be some excellent celebrity guest hosts, as well as the ever-popular eBay charity auction, all the details for which will be down below in the description box. Last year I auctioned off a couple of t-shirts, one of which was signed by both the lovely Eugenie Scott and YouTube's own Christina Rad, and that was sent off to its proud winner. But, through a strange series of events, that t-shirt has somehow found its way back to me with the addition of a signature from the winner, which gave me an idea. Maybe I can go out and see if I can collect a few more signatures, and then auction it off again and try to raise even more money for MSF. Let's see how it went down. What we on the pro-science side of things have to do is think about the ways that science affect people where it's important to them, which is really which is in their emotions. Now, now one way is to encourage the awe and wonder of science, which is certainly there and, and definitely something that, that I love to talk about. I, I hope that that I can communicate some of, of that wonder and get people interested in science that way. But there's also very practical ways of helping people understand that science really is important. Most people are concerned about health, their own health, the health of their, you know, their loved ones. Well, science is going to help keep you and your loved ones healthier longer because this method of science in which we test our explanations and we keep the ones that work and we keep refining them and we keep getting better and better at them are the ways that we really do improve our means of taking care of people who are sick or who are debilitated in some ways. There is this general notion that we must respect people's beliefs no matter what we think about them and I couldn't disagree more with this. I don't see why any system of beliefs deserves respect simply because it exists. If there are certain groups of people, and trust me, there are, I have been arguing with them, who believe that some people are inferior to others because they have a different skin color, would you feel automatically inclined to respect that? Then why should religion be any different? If we want to see anything improve, we need to get over these social taboos, because ignoring facts will not make any problems go away. And the fact is this, that about 70% of the world population lacks religious freedom right now. We do need to talk about this if we hope to change anything, because freedom of religion and freedom from religion are fundamental rights that everybody should have. I'm a bit surprised at how much not being a believer has and has not change the way I make decisions. Uh, I'm in many ways the same guy I was when I was a believer, but there are significant differences. And I think the biggest one is that I'm much more cognizant of the finality of death than I was as a believer when I thought life went on. Uh, and this has pushed me to enjoy life more, to try not to get caught up in petty bullshit all that much, but that's very much a work in progress. Um, to enjoy and treasure the people in my life more, to take better care of my health, uh, and to try to help others to enjoy life and one another more. That kind of seems like a big deal to me. And the psychology of skepticism is a, is a really neglected area. Everybody thinks that what needs explaining is belief. And to some extent, yes, it does, you know, but there's also the question of well, what's so different about these people who don't believe then? And I think there's at least two different subcategories, uh, maybe more, but I think there's probably one subcategory of the kind of really hardline militant you know, sceptic who says it's definitely all nonsense, all people who set up as psychics and mediums, they're all con artists, you know, they'll show, throw, throw them in prison and throw away the key, all that kind of stuff. And then there's, what well, I like think is the more moderate scepticism, which is, is that right guys, or are we, are we, are we in the yeah. throw them in prison and <laughs> throw away the key? Hopefully. Where, where we say, you know, we've got our set of beliefs, but we could be wrong and we're willing to put it to the test, we're, we're, we're happy to, you know, and you know, if, if it turns out paranormal voices really do exist, well, we'll accept that.
That's the funny thing about the word is that it, it tends to get kind of a bad rap. A lot of people confuse yeah. skeptic with cynic. Yes. They think that skepticism is about being a, a grumpy old man. Yeah. And or they uh, just it just never occurs to people to call themselves a skeptic, yeah. which I think is totally okay because what we try to to tell people and what we try to encourage is just to be skeptical, not to be yes. a skeptic, but just to be. You know, look at what's going on around you and try to be rational about yeah. the world. Ask yeah. questions, try to find out how the universe really works because it's so much more amazing and so much more beautiful than the lies that people try to peddle right. to you. Thank you very much for having me here at the Congress. I'm the founder of Camp Quest UK, which is a secular summer camp program for children aged 9 to 16 focusing on challenge, uh, combining challenging outdoor activities with a fun educational program that focuses on science, philosophy and critical thinking. I am going to talk to you today a little bit about the educational philosophy behind our camps, but on a more broad basis about the state of science education in the UK. Our government is at the moment investing greatly in so-called STEM subjects, which mean science, technology, engineering and maths. And yet industry is increasingly saying that we don't have enough high quality scientists and engineers. But in the end, it's a, it's a good story or a, a happy ending mm -hmm. because I, I won. I defended my case successfully. Two, um, other people began to focus on chiropractic and scrutinize it and, and, and look at the evidence and realize that it doesn't work for many conditions. Doctors as well. Um, and, and also, um, there was a, a clamor for reforming English libel law uh, because of my case, because of other cases uh, with skeptics, people like Ben Goldacre, uh, Andy Lewis, who writes the Quackometer blog, had been threatened with libel. Lots of people were being shut down by English libel law. And, and I think people just said enough is enough. It is wrong for the law to be used to silence valid criticisms. I am an atheist, tried and true. I have been since I was, oh, I guess about this tall. I'm only about this tall now. And uh, I, I made, up, made, the, made up my mind that uh, I was going to investigate all these things and question them. I went to Sunday school. I was tossed out of Sunday school immediately. But it gave me 25 cents that I could have put in the contribution plate there, see, when they passed the plate around. And I found out that at Purdy's Drugstore, you could buy a two-flavor ice cream sundae for 25 cents. And that was a great discovery of, of my childhood, I must say, and I took full advantage of it. My parents, bless them, never found out. And I went off every Sunday morning as if going to Sunday school, but I lied. And I, I'm ashamed to admit it now. And if my, my dad and mom were up there someplace, or down there someplace, I have no idea, uh, I asked them to forgive me. So, how do you get your hands on this magnificent piece of history? Well, all the details for the charity auction will be down below in the description box, and I will post a reminder video once the auction is live in September. And of course, all proceeds from this auction will be going directly to MSF, and shipping will be completely free, direct to your door anywhere in the world. Now, maybe you want to wear this t-shirt to the next TAM or Skeptics Convention, or maybe your next church meetup. Or perhaps you want to get it framed and hung on the wall, or maybe you want to go around and collect a few more signatures for this. I would love to see it become a regular thing, traveling around the world and getting signatures. But hey, that is entirely up to you. And of course, like last year, I'll be making a donation to MSF equal to the winning bid of this t-shirt. So your bid will be worth twice as much. And finally, what can you do to help raise awareness for Doctors Without Borders and even a bit of cash? Well, like last year, for the first 20 people who mirror this video and post it as a response to this video, I will donate 10 bucks in your name. Details for that will also be down below. So yeah, I guess that about wraps it up for now. Stay tuned for more updates, but until then, Swiss Dopper out.